let's talk about some important distinctions when using the term game engine. Game engines are sometimes conflated with frameworks. For instance, GLFW is a framework which provides input, rendering, and multi-monitor functionality. GLFW stands for Graphics Library Framework. Another framework used to make both Dead Cells and Northguard is called Heaps.io. They call themselves a game engine, but they do not provide the slew of tools which many users come to expect from game engines if their experience is with Unreal, Unity, and Godot. Heaps.io may instead be considered a high-performance rendering framework. Even big game engines will often leverage libraries in other frameworks. For instance, Unity implements a layout engine called Yoga for its UI, which was created by Facebook. You don't have to build it all, but you can. To build a game engine, you do not have to make everything from scratch. That is not to say that you can just stitch things together and call it a day. There will still be software architecture and serious programming involved. You decide on the level of complexity required. If you want to write a 3D rendering library from scratch, you can. You can also choose not to do that and instead leverage a rendering framework which already exists. You may be thinking, okay, then why not just leverage an existing game engine? Well, the difference here is one of scope. Generally, if you are making a game, you want to draw stuff on the screen. A rendering framework will allow you to do just that and nothing more, allowing you to focus on building the systems required rather than learning the tools. Okay, now you want some simple animations, but you do not need blend trees, animation subgraphs, and all the other bells and whistles. Well, you can just write a few functions which handle easings and timings, and that's it. Is it general purpose and able to handle all cases? No. But that is fine, because you only need to cover the cases required by your particular project. More tools do not mean better solutions. Most games built in general purpose game engines do not use a fraction of the features provided. The tools given to you in these game engines can sometimes cause you to come up with strangely hacky solutions which produce inconsistent results. For instance, I have seen people using the Unity Animation Graph as a general purpose state machine for their game logic. It's an interesting approach, but now the game logic is tightly coupled to this UI system which only exists inside the Unity Engine Editor. Game Engine plus Game is not equal to Game Engine. There is a considerable difference between building a game and engine from scratch versus building a game engine with no idea in mind. When designing an engine to build a specific game or type of game, you can be absolutely ruthless with feature cutting, only implementing the features which the game requires to function. Conversely, when you are building a game engine designed for public consumption or for creating games of unknown types, you must implement orders of magnitude more features. This is where people who decide to make game engines for their games can go seriously wrong if they are not careful. One can end up implementing a bunch of features just in case and end up wasting a lot of time. If you're planning to make a game and write the engine from scratch, be aware that the engine design should echo the game design. For example, if you're making a 2D side-scroller, there is no need to have a first-person camera with perspective implemented in your engine. You are never going to be utilizing that. You decide the programming language. Language choice can be important for a few reasons which we will go into shortly. But first I want to speak about one reason why it's not important, and that is learning the language. Programming languages can be picked up pretty quickly once you have a decent amount of experience in one language. Learning a new language and its particular features are trivial in comparison to the other reasons why being able to choose the programming language matters. There are some more hurdles involved in going from something like JavaScript to Haskell as they are very different. Nevertheless, all programming languages are just a way of letting the programmer know what is going on in the computer's memory. Being able to choose the language means you can choose what you already know and build off of that knowledge. I decided not to do that and instead to learn C at the same time as creating an engine because I wanted to know more about memory management. However, if it's more comfortable for you and a better use of your time, you can just stick with whatever language you already know. 
Building off of your existing knowledge, you can develop tools to help you with your subsequent projects and gain a deep understanding along the way. Then in your next game project, you will have multiple tools, libraries, or modules to leverage, and you will know exactly how they work and what their uses are. If you are a web developer with mostly JavaScript experience, then you can leverage that and build a game in JavaScript. There are numerous examples of games and engines written in JavaScript. Crosscode, a top-down action role-playing game by Radical Fish, is written in JavaScript. The developers took the game engine ImpactJS and heavily modified it to achieve their goals. They have a number of technical blog posts on their website which you can check out. You decide the paradigm. Object-oriented, procedural, structured, functional, insert programming style here. Whatever style of programming you want to use, you can. With the big three, Unity, Unreal, and Godot, you are locked into their way of doing things. You can fight against it, of course, but then you are struggling with the very tool which is intended to make your life easier. If most of your experience is writing programs a specific way and it does not have too negative an impact on performance, we'll get into performance shortly, then you are free to continue writing in that style. When using an opinionated engine, you run into the issue of fighting with the tools repeatedly unless you decide to conform to its standards, which I should mention is an entirely valid strategy. You can refactor for performance. Without access to the game engine's internals, you may be at a loss to improve the performance of your game past a certain point. If you're a solo developer or a small team, chances are you won't be going for hyper-realistic graphics and utilizing the latest features 3D graphics has to offer. However, you may be creating something like a city building game or a colony management game. These types of games can be deceptively performance hungry, as there may be tens or hundreds of thousands of calculations happening each second. In Unity, for example, you are at the mercy of not just the engine architecture, but also the c -sharp garbage collector. For anyone watching or listening who does not know what I am talking about, I'll give a brief summary of what a garbage collector is. Some languages allow you to do manual memory management. If you have 100 objects in the scene, they can be anything, but let's take an example like units in a real-time strategy game. When 90 of these units are killed, you don't want them hanging around, taking up memory and potentially still having calculations done to them. So you call something like delete on the unit objects. If the language is garbage collected, all this does is mark the objects for deletion until the next time the garbage collector runs, which you cannot reasonably control. I say reasonably because there is a method to force the garbage collector to run, but it is a considerable performance cost, as it goes through every object in the program and checks if it needs to be removed. If the language is not garbage collected, you must explicitly free up the memory. The difference is that it is instantaneous and only regards the objects you want to free from memory, not every object in the program. That is just one example of where your hands may be tied. The scenarios will differ depending on which engine you are using. Programming is a vocation. If you're the kind of person who feels compelled to create even when you could be relaxing, you'll understand what I mean by this. Practicing and getting better at programming is not only joyous, but it is also necessary. Spend too many nights in a row watching Netflix or playing video games, and you'll start to get that feeling in the back of your head. The one that drives you to create and explore. The one that tells you you're wasting your time. As soon as you dive into an old project or start a new one, you'll lose yourself and become one with time and space. At least until your phone vibrates and knocks you out of the flow state. Tip, turn off your phone during deep work. Writing a game engine has its challenges, and that's a good thing. When you practice your craft and challenge yourself, you improve rapidly. The sphere of computer programming is so expansive that no one person can be all knowing. That doesn't mean you can't try. Knowledge for knowledge's sake is a valid philosophy. Every time you sit down and work on your engine, you are making progress towards not just finishing the engine and or your game, but towards a better version of yourself. Conclusion Building an engine gives you complete control and knowledge of the inner workings. It will force you to learn about a whole bunch of things which you might not have otherwise touched on but it doesn't have to be crazy hard. 
There are frameworks and libraries for all sorts of things. Rendering, asset importing, audio input, displaying text, physics, linear algebra, and many more. I intentionally did not go into the circumstances under which you should not build a game engine, as they have been cited and rehashed all over the internet. Make sure to read or listen to the other side of this argument as well. I have learned more about programming and how computers work in the last few months than in the entirety of my development career. A big caveat here is that I was a web developer, not a game developer. If you find yourself in a position where building an engine seems viable, you should certainly consider it. I cannot tell you if it's right for you, but I can tell you that it was right for me. If you made it to the end, thank you for listening or watching. Let me know if you're building your own engine or if you completely disagree with me. Just leave a comment below. If you like the video, please leave a thumbs up as it does help the channel. If you dislike the video, please leave a thumbs down as it also helps the channel. And if you have a particular point that you think I totally missed, please leave a comment about that. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then make sure to subscribe. I'll have one of these every Wednesday and another engine programming video every Sunday. Catch ya.